Woo -woo, I'm back. I'm back in the saddle again. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to LDCC's Art Blog. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here. And if you do not know who I am, I am Kathy Grillo of Kathy Grillo Designs. Hi, thank you. Thank you for coming. And you can find me at all this lovely social media. And if you're if if you're a regular viewer, you will notice I have two new symbols on my sign. Hi, Dubs. I am now um, also doing some live streams on Twitch, and I'm on Flickr now too. I'm telling you, I'm gonna dominate this social media. <laughs> Hi, Dandy. Thanks for sharing. Okay, great. All right. So, that's my little plug. Now, today, we have a wonderful um, art block lineup. Very excited to see some of these people. It's going to be a great day. So, Inky Paws Art is next. Please um, follow, look this person up. I don't know the name. Deb, if you know Inky Paw's name, you can shout it out. Or if Inky Paws is in here, shout it out. I don't know who that is. But follow them, and um, we will discover what's going on. Take a screenshot of our lineup here so you can follow us all day. It's an exciting day with some amazing... And Okay, it's Jenny. Oh, Jenny from the block. All right. <laughs> okay, I got it. All right. And if you're wondering what LDCC is, we are Little Dev's Creative Crew. If you like art, come join us. You can find us on all the major social medias. And you can always um, send a message or uh, DM or to any of us, me or any of the other people on the list, and we can hook you up, welcome you into the family, and uh, join and share in our creativity. Creativity. All right. Ooh, I'm still on my first cup of coffee, too, believe it or not, right? Okay, so today I have this lovely little cat. I always usually do dogs, and I know there's a lot of cat people, and I said, you know what? I got to start working on some cats. So I looked up cats. Cats actually have cat breeds, just like dogs. So I'm sort of working my way through the cat breed. This is a, ab, I can't even pronounce this, Abyssinian cat? Abyssinian? I don't know. If somebody's a cat person and knows how to say it, let me know. Hi, Arcade. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm working on this cat. As you can tell, I already spent a few hours on the eyes. You all know how I like my eyes. Yes, it's an Ab Abyssinian. I'm, it, I think it's pronounced something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a real cat person. So, but I'm learning. That's why I'm going through all the breeds so I can familiarize myself. So then when somebody says, hey, can you do a portrait of my cat? I can say, hey, yes, I can. And here's some that I did. So I do have a little reference photo because I do not know what they, good morning. Good morning, Timon. Yeah, we're allergic to cats here too. We have two Shih Tzus that are hypoallergenic, don't uh, shed, but, um, I have people who are really allergic to cats. So, I looked up this reference photo because I do not know off the top of my head what this cat looks like, obviously. So I'm just stealing some colors and markings from this little guy. But just generally not, you know, not really doing that cat's portrait, but making a cat. Alright, so for people who don't know about digital... I do kind of paint like I'm painting on canvas, but I do do the layers to protect things. So, I have my sketch on my first layer, which will not be part of the final drawing when I'm done. And, as you can tell, my sketch is very light, so I can make it dark if I need to, or 
I can make it really, really light. So it's just a light little reminder. I tend to keep it light so I don't, um, it doesn't get in my way. My eyes, of course, because I spent a lot of time on those eyeballs. Peekaboo. Um, they're protected on a different layer. Everything else is probably being painted mostly on this layer. So, I'm using a real wet, oh, we'll slide you over here. A real wet oil, wet blender. And the wet blender blends the colors sort of as I paint them. So if anybody has any questions, pipe up. If you just want to talk about how the weather is today. I know some people have been having some crazy weather. I think our friends in Florida, if any of them are you still, I don't know if Deb's still in here. Our friends in Florida were having some uh, hurricane stuff going on, which that's a little scary. <laughs> so I hope everybody's okay. I haven't been able to check all my social meds yet this morning. I've been prepping and getting coffee and taking care of my dogs. So, pipe in. Talk amongst yourselves. Follow everybody. Tell me what's going on. And I'm just going to kind of work on this face. I usually start with the eyes. And I'll work around between the eyes and then start going in a circle around until I fill out the face. And once I get the face, then I do the body. So I have a couple colors here loosely laid out. And I'm going to take my wet brush and just kind of um, make a background. Just fills it in a little. And gives me a sense of the main color of um, that section of the cat. Oh, this is Corel Painter, um, 2016. They do have a 2017 version out that I've been eyeing, but um, this is a very painterly program. If you the your your paint skills transfer over really really nicely to this program. You have Draw, okay. I don't really know what the difference is so much. Um, I think the painter has maybe a little more of um, fine art mediums or t the brushes are set up to act that way a little more. I'm not exactly sure. Because I didn't do the research to buy this. My lovely husband did. Alright. So I'm going to start blending out. from the eye socket and I'm just loosely throwing some stuff down. Graphics, okay, that makes sense. I know my husband's a researcher so I'm, I'm, I know he probably, I mean one, it's not cheap either of the stuff he got me. So I'm sure he researched it and he wanted to get me what would work best and who knows. But I love it. <laughs> My um, regular traditional art skills has transferred pretty easily and quickly into this program. So I would recommend it for artists if they were interested in doing some digital work for sure. It is an investment, but you have to consider that I'm not wasting paper um, or paints. And I have all my supplies. I don't have to keep go buying them. And I have every brush, every medium. You know, it's like having, it's being, it's like being a kid in the art store. Imagine, right? <laughs> Here's an art store. Oh well, thank you. That's awesome. And I'm trying to put the same colors um, on each side of the face, so I'm working both sides at the same time. Hi Alexa. And then I'll just keep adding in till I get the details the way I like them. But right now the first um, go through is mostly just like getting the directions of the hair. 
and some color in and start working on the form. So I'm really kind of just blocking out this cat's markings. Because um, the Abyssinians, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, excuse me if I'm not. <laughs> they, they have pretty um, distinct markings for cat. You know, like, sort of like Bengals or, um, there's a few breeds that they all kind of have the same markings. So, you need to represent those, or it's just not that breed. So I'm trying my best to do that right now. Just kind of get in these little spots, and once I get the spots, I, the colors in, I could um, then focus more on details. I think I'm second up today, Paige. Um... Danny was up first, I believe. He was having some technical issues, I think, though. He had some issues this morning. Yeah, there you go. How, Danny, how was your, did, um, it was your phone overheating? I felt so bad for you. Yeah. I don't know, I've never really had, I maybe it's because I'm on a tablet. When I do my scopes, I'm on a tablet. I use, um, an, I have a Nexus 7 tablet that I'm using. Um, that's what usually I use to scope from. I do have a phone, but I'm usually just watching scopes on the phone. Um, do you? Okay. And I don't know, does your phone get hot? Does your phone get hot when you watch on Periscope too, or is it just when you're scoping? Look, I'm going to do like tech support and draw at the same time, you guys. <laughs> Yours does? Welcome to, Ath uh, welcome to Kathy's Draw and Tech Support. May I help you? <laughs> Oh, yeah, my my old one did not run Periscope either. And so my husband bought me a new one. Oh, watching makes it hot? Dang. Huh. Okay, well, that kind of stinks. That's where you have to decide how much you like Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you like Periscope? Does you like it enough to get a new tablet? Hmm. I got two new tablets because of Periscope. Isn't that crazy? But I'm crazy. <laughs> we got rid of the old tablet and... I had a tablet, and then my husband bought a tablet. And I said, well, make sure it does Periscope so I can load my Periscope onto your tablet. Oh, yeah. They have to catch up with the times, don't they, guys? They need to say, hey, what about us Periscope peeps? We're all live streaming here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, um, I just checked out Twitch yesterday. I don't know if any of you guys, have any of you ever checked out Twitch? But it's just on a computer. Yeah, I did my very first, um, Twitch, oh, this is, it's like a tongue twister. Twitch stream yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. And it was a slight disaster because, you know, you're still working out how everything's going to be set up. So, but it, was, it might be interesting. And then a little bit, you know, different crowd. Yeah, they have a whole creative section over there now. It used to be mostly gaming, which is where my boys have been on it. And um, I didn't really think much of it. And my son's like, you need to be on... Do you need to do Twitch? Do Twitch. And so yesterday he was home and I said, okay, well, set me up. And he's like, there's a whole section for just art people. 
And I was like, oh, alright. So we'll try it out for a little bit. Never know. I, I did have six people watching me on my very first one, and I was just sort of messing around with, um, I was just kind of messing around with trying to figure it out. So, never know. Gotta be open to all options when you're trying to just put yourself out there, you know? Alright, so I'm just kind of still blocking out some of these colors here, if you're wondering what I'm just um, throwing down here. Trying to get, like, the base and the directions of these hairs. Okay, I'll be here for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> So, I had a great sleep. I'm in such a good mood, you guys. I had such a great sleep last night. My husband, who usually likes to sleep totally in the dark, and he likes the sound of his fan, but last night, I love the sound of a rainstorm. He hooked up through the internet, like, a whole ten hours of a thunderstorm. And played it through the speakers. You had an earthquake. Oh. And so I slept all night. Oh yeah, I slept all night with it just like raining and thundering. And it was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> and it sounded so real. I woke up this morning and I was like, is it really raining out for reals? And he's like, nope, that's still the, the uh, recording. And I was like, oh. That little white noise, but I don't know. So maybe tonight I'll try to sleep on the beach. I'll try some, I'll try some, uh, waves. Was it a big earthquake? Where are you at? Where are you at, Paige? I think, where were you at again? I can't remember. Are you in Oklahoma or something? I don't know where you're at. Oklahoma. Okay, that's what I thought. I hate saying it like my memory. I'm old, guys. I'm old, so, you know, when they tell you when you're younger that one of the first things to go, it is kind of, it's very sad. That and your hormones from young girls were going to, that and the, the, Tammy will tell you about it, the crazy menopause hormones, you, you kind of don't remember stuff as well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is Oklahoma becoming the new L.A.? That's crazy. Alright. I hope everybody has a good cup of coffee today. I have a big mug of coffee that I'm drinking. I have English toffee cappuccino in with my coffee today. Oh, oil? Probably. Tea time. My son's um, girlfriend just went home to England last week. And uh, she gets up and has tea every day. I'm like, you're so quaint. I love it, but I don't like tea. I probably have to have a lot of cream and sugar in it. Alright, so now I'm just going to kind of add water here. Oh, geez. And fill in these, fill in the color a little bit. Just loosely, I'm not really blending it too much. I don't want the color spots to smear. It's kind of, um, just laying down the groundwork and I, it'll help me give different shadings to my colors because the oil paints work together. And so even though if I put the same color on top, it will automatically do some of the shading for me by blending in with the color that's below it. And I just blend it in the direction that the hair would grow. Oh, I forgot that middle spot. Oh, 
We get very, very, very few um, earthquakes here, and like very, very few that you'd feel. I'm sure we have some that we don't even realize we have, but I'm up in Michigan and like by Ohio area, we don't get that many. So I've never really had one where I felt like the shaking, so that'd be kind of freaky. And my cousin's daughter just moved to San Francisco, so... She's waiting to experience one now. <laughs> She's a little freaked out about it. Alright. Oh, are they normal there? Oh. No, no, not in Oklahoma, but, uh, okay. This is weird. All right, I want to step back for a second here. Oh, as you can see, this little guy's face is starting to come around. I'm glad that it wasn't bad where, like, stuff was shaking all over the place. Thank you. I know we're all t we're all talking about the earthquake. It's exciting stuff. Oh, oh! It was a, it was a toddler. It was a preschool earthquake. <laughs> that's a cute way. I like that. That was a cute way. Of saying it. Oh, that was really cute. Alright. I don't know what this color is going to do. So let me see how... I don't know. I'll put in a little bit of... I want it to be light enough to see over here. I'm just kind of brushing in some direction of hair. Just a little bit before I move on to the nose. Because I really don't want to lose my flow. So I'm trying to put in a neutral color. So I'll get the forms. And after I get the form, then I will um, work on the details. Which, you all know, I'll probably be doing that for the rest of this week. Oh, Chewie's having a fit because I closed the door. I was like, I need time for my periscope. I'm going to have to make like an on the air sign or something. And put it on the door and say, I'm on the air. But, some sad news, but it's exciting news. I was a little bummed yesterday because my one son is going to try to move out. And it made me sad. But the good news is I get his room for an art room. So <laughs> soon enough I will not be crammed in the corner of my uh, bedroom doing this. I will have my own room with my own computer. And a, chalk a chalkboard wall to play around on. So... Get to do some, I'll have some space to do some traditional art. So that's exciting too. It's hard. It doesn't, I hope, I, she doesn't mean to be a bitch to you probably. I was very sad yesterday. I talked to Deb about it though too, but I mean, I cried yesterday. I was just like, I'm proud of him because that means I did my job and, you know, he's feeling confident enough to go out, but it's sad. Oh, your mom is either calm or super angry. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, just wait. Your kids are young, Paige. Just wait.
you know? Yeah, I know it is. Thanks. I, you know, you kind of got to, you mourn the change a little bit, and then, and it's scary for moms, I think it's scarier. My husband's like, yeah, you're a good job, kid, and, and I, I just think, mom, I, you know, my, I'm like, okay, are you going to be, where are you staying, and you're going to be safe and secure, and have food to eat, and money for gas, and, you know. Moms worry about all that detail stuff. And he's not just moving out. He's moving to another state, guys. <laughs> yeah. But they will eventually, you know. So we're originally from Cleveland, and we moved to, um, yeah, we're from Cleveland, Ohio. And we moved here to Michigan for my husband's job. And my son's moving back to Ohio. So, uh, my family, I mean, he'll have family and everything there. He won't be, like, totally by himself. So that helps, too. And he's going to work, he's going to work for my sister-in-law. So he's going to be working for family. So it helps a little bit. <laughs> I'll have somebody who will be keeping an eye on him, sort of, and, He's working in um, her restaurant, so I'm sure he won't starve. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. He's 22. So... So I've been dealing with that for a day or so. I wasn't really going to talk about it. but You guys are my friends. My family. Let you know why if I'm a little nuts. That's my issues this week. <laughs> but it's just happening fast. Because he's leaving in like he, two weeks. He put in two weeks in both his jobs. And he's like, boom. He lined up the job with my sister-in-law. Boom. Hey, me too, Eve. I'm drinking coffee. Surprise, surprise. What are you making? I have, I have English toffee cappuccino in mine. And a touch of organic honey. <laughs> I can't drink red blue coffee. I think coffee tastes like dirt. <laughs> so I have to make it fancy. <laughs> Isn't it funny? <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Alright, I'm going to try to work on this little cat's nose for a minute. It's like I never drank coffee. I thought it was like crap until I hit like 35 and then I was like, oh my god, I'm so tired at 2 in the afternoon. I just need like something. And I didn't, you know, so there I am. Alright. So cats have like this little... I'm learning about cats and anatomy slowly here through drawing them. But most of their noses have, like, this black line around it, if you ever look. Oh, have you? <laughs> Alright. But it's kind of soft up here on the top. So I'm going to make a little soft shade up in here. They have, like, those little velvety noses. And I want to kind of make it look. You know, soft. That's the hardest thing, I think. The hardest thing is trying to get texture on a digital. I do not have a cat. I have two dogs. They're in my profile picture with two puppies. And right now they're barking outside the door because they are waiting for my husband to fix their ball. They're so spoiled. Yeah, I'm going from kids to dogs just so you know. I had one dog. Now I have two. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. What are you gonna do? You have a kitten? Aww. People in my house are allergic to cats. But you're the reason why I'm drawing this cat and going through the cat uh, things because I want to be able to draw cats for people too because I know there's lots of people who love their kitties as much as us dog people love our dogs. And so I need to practice a little bit. You like huskies? I'm drawing a Malmute. Have you seen my Alaskan Malmute that I've been working on? Have you seen it? Hmm. I used to have a cat. People in my house are allergic to him, though. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you really quick. See? I have this one that I'm working on right there. Haven't finished him yet. It's right there. It's a big file, so I'm not going to open it because it takes time. But, yeah. Other scopes during the week. I have like four or five things I'm always working on, so. These cats tend to have like little markings on their noses too, don't they? Oh, guess what time it is? It's half time. So just so you guys know, today on the art block, we have some great artists. Here you go. Take a screenshot so you can follow everybody and know the schedule. Or you just have to look up hashtag LDCC or hashtag Art Block and you'll be able to find us all day. We're going all the way to midnight tonight, guys. So we have a great lineup all day long. And you will see all sorts of different art and creative um, things going on. And the exciting news is we're all part of Little Deb's creative crew. And you can find us on any of the social medias contact or contact any of us and we'll help you you know join the group if you're interested and like another exciting news is Deb is working on putting together um, an art block but for musicians and um, so you don't have to just be a drawing artist you could be a singer or a dancer we're working on things for everybody poetry the whole the whole nine yards if you have a creative mind um, look us up and you will be inspired and welcomed and we want to support all that stuff. It's a great group. Yes, a poetry, anything, art, words with, words with art, I mean, or art with words, Ugh. art with words, <laughs> words with art. Well, that would work too, words with art, art with words, you know. <laughs> I'm, telling, I'm telling you I'm still on my first cup of coffee that's the problem guy that's the problem yeah go get on it there's a project for you start recruiting some people to you know, if you can't, I had an idea too that if you, I don't, you know, it's your thing, so I don't know if you're open to it, but it doesn't even have to be just the poetry. I would think anything like, um, with words. So I would say somebody who maybe there's like somebody who's an author or, you know, just language, you know. Or even songwriters, because songs are poetry, too. Well, yeah, calligraphy. I would do anything, like, yeah. You could add that in, too. Just, like, um, the, uh, what could be your spin? Um, the art of, uh, yeah, the art of words, language. You know? Expression. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But even like, you know, um, like those journal, I would hook up, pay, okay. So now we're talking business for everybody else who's in there. Sorry. Now we're talking business. Uh, 
I would I would check into um what about people who what about people who like do the scrapbooking stuff and make cards, you know? And they write little sayings or they make like those like a little bit of art to go with quotes or something like that. I think that would be cool too. So if you can't fill a day because there's not that many people actually writing poetry, you have other options you can open it up to if you decide to do so. And I think it would be a feasible a feasible um, connection. So then the only problem you have is to come up with uh, some nifty name on a, on a day. I don't know if you could tie it in. Word Wednesdays or something. <laughs> Word Wednesdays. Oh, thank you. Put a little texture in on this nose. Even though it's really, you don't really see a whole lot of texture on the paper, I like adding it in. I mean, in a picture. And I don't think you'd be taking the journal thing. I just think that it would, you know, be people's choice whether they decided to join your train on that or not. It just would be open to it, you know. People aren't owned. If they decide to do it, they should be welcome to if you're open to it. The hard part is getting, I think the hard part is poetry, I mean, art is personal in a way. I mean, you're putting a little bit of yourself out there. But most poetry is really personal. I mean, it comes from, like, your soul, you know. And it usually relates to something that has affected you, either good or bad. So some of it could be really deep. It's like therapy in a way. So I think the challenge is getting people willing to um, put it out there. Their own poetry. Hi, Des. But um, you can maybe even say they could read poetry. Then you might get people who aren't creative. Yeah. Then you get people who aren't like creative enough to write their own poetry, but maybe just appreciate poetry. We can have some... Poetry readers, maybe. I could read some poetry. <laughs> I have tried to write poetry. It's really bad poetry. Hi, guys. Thanks for stopping. I'm just kind of putting in some colors here on this little tabby cat. I do. Like, when I was in high school, I went through a little, I should write poetry. Like, I don't know. And I... I have a book, a notebook somewhere with some really bad poems in it about who knows what. <laughs> if I ever find it, maybe I'll share it. Oh, and everybody can sit there. Hi, Jason. Everybody can sit there and say, oh, yeah, I remember writing bad poems like that back in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, at least it, <laughs> at least, this is a funny story that happened to my son. He's in junior high. This is junior high, okay? So imagine if you're a young boy in junior high school. And they had to do the, um, you know, you had to write something and whatever. And so, the class wrote their poems and the, the, the teacher, the teacher asked for volunteers to read it in front of the class, right? So this one girl volunteered to read her poem, and the whole poem was about my how much she liked my son. 
and she read it in front of the whole class, and he didn't like her. Uh, it was just like she had this major crush on him or something, and she wrote this whole poem about liking somebody and then not knowing you were alive or something like that. And every it was a very small community, very, very small community school, so everybody knew, everybody knew what it was about. And my son said he just felt like shrinking into a hole in the floor. He's so embarrassed. But she, I go, that was ballsy, man. She got up in front of her entire junior high class and read a poem about some kid, you know. I was like, that's ballsy. Yeah, right? And she was, like, crying as she read it, he said. And I was like, oh, God. And since it was so small, you know, he wanted to be nice. You know, they were all friendly because there was literally, like, 20 kids in the entire 8th grade. And so he was friendly and everything with her. And he just he goes, I just felt so bad because I, there was no way I was going to, like, like her like that. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> Poor girl. Uh, I still we still see her every once in a while now when we go back for stuff, and she's a sweet girl. But it was like, oh, but then, but she was very brave. I told you know, I was like, that's pretty brave. But of course, his friends teased him about it for like three weeks. Junior high kids being all mean, right? Okay, we're working on this little face. It's getting there. Jenny from the Blacks up next, guys. If you look at my title, you'll see her handle. Look her up so you can uh, continue with the art block today. All right. If you follow me, you will eventually, eventually at some point, see how this guy turns out. <laughs> I don't get to work so regular. So, when my, when my real life, when my job, the other, the paying job is done, I'll have more time to devote to this. Thank you. I'm just basically um, getting my pattern out. I'm going through the breeds of cats. So this is an Absinthian cat. This is Corel Painter I'm using. And um, so I'm just kind of like tapping, trying to get some of the color markings done. And I put a, um, a real wet oil blender and I just lay some colors down. And then I'm taking um, my water brush here. I need a bigger brush. And just slightly blending them in to give me a background color, a base color, that then I will then come in and draw all the hair marks on top and develop the highlights and shadows to create the form. But it's a process. <laughs> and I will pick at it until I'm happy with it, so sometimes it doesn't always go so fast. But... I have been letting go of some of my pickiness. I want to try to f do some, um, that's why I do like the butterfly and flower ones that I end up doing because I really uh, don't plan a lot with those. So I'm trying to free my mind. Free your mind. The rest will follow. Or so they say, right? <laughs> All right. So I just use my reference photo mostly for um, a base to get some colors because I don't know anything about this cat. And also um, for the markings. And I'm not following them per se because I'm not doing a portrait of somebody's cat right now. 
which when you do a portrait of a specific cat, you really have to watch the markings. I just want it to look like one of these cats. So that's a little more freedom. Okay. I'm here for another 15, 15 minutes. Whenever we order Chinese food, that's how long it takes, no matter what you order. Uh, 15 minute. I love it. We just had Chinese last night. I think that's why I brought it up. <laughs> That'd be ready 15 minute. You can order one thing, it's 15 minutes. You can order 20 things, it's 15 minutes. So I'm just kind of laying this down for my directions on my hair, the hair, and you create like a little, oh, just stop it. My dogs, don't they know, don't they know I'm busy? All right, so I want a little separation from this piece right here but not a lot. It's very slight, this blend, right from where it goes from the bridge of the nose into, I don't know, dogs, it's called a muzzle, but the front of the face here, and then this part, it's almost like this whole separate line, and it goes to the side and towards the back. So the hair direction is very important when you hit those areas, because the direction you have the hair going is... Um, really what tells the story about the form of this, of an animal, or, well, this cat. And so sometimes, when you're drawing an animal, you have to add a little bit of something that might not be in a photo exactly, but it's what you know a viewer needs to see <clears throat> to differentiate the, the reality of it. So you kind of have to learn, and that's just practice. You kind of need to learn um, how the eyes, how regular eyes see things. I call it regular eyes because I think artists see things differently. They look at things a little more in a different way and see things because I see things that I don't think my husband or anybody kind of notices. Oh, she's so pathetic, right? Telling you. So sometimes you add like little highlights or a little bit more of a darker shadow or a line, and it's just to, to help you um, differentiate between sections. And also, sometimes you'll either see a slightly dark line or a white line at the very edge of a portrait, depending on what the background because you don't want your subject to fade into the background for the most either. And we missed you so much. Thanks for coming back, Paige. So the cool thing about these oil paints, digital oil paints, and this brush I'm using is um, if I do a little flick of the wrist, I get these really sharp, nice little edges, and they're light enough that they just kind of blend in with the paint. Ooh, gross. That would have been awful. And so um, the medium does a lot of the work for me in this instance. <laughs> she, uh, I would have made somebody else clean it up, even if I broke it. No way. Right. You're so funny. This cat has like this, these distinctive, like 
first it's like these arrows under his eyes and like these little half moon shapes on his mouth, his like muzzle area here. Uh, I hate, I, I'm not a jalapeno, I'm not a jalapeno person, my husband is though. So these cats have like these. Which there'll be more details when I highlight these. I'm just kind of making a little bit of a mark there. Alright. Oh, I like olives. They're nice and salty. And so we highlight the bottom of the chin, but you kind of want a shadow right here because my light source is kind of coming down. So you see on my eyes, I have a little bit of the shadow under the eyes. And then there's going to be a shadow under the mouth because obviously it's under the nose. And shadows used to really mess me up, like light sources and shadows. Um, but that's another thing. It just comes with practice. I don't even really hardly think about it as much anymore. And so I always have to remember to talk about it. <laughs> and cats. I know dogs usually have like a little black lip. And I think cats have like a brownie pink lip. So I just want to give a touch of that. Just a touch of that color. And it's going to fade in anyway. But just a touch of it. This is what I call the magic triangle. So this is the most important part of any portrait painting. It's first the eyes, because the eyes will draw you in. It gives you the direction. And it gives you the, um, the feeling and emotion. And then... You have the next part is the mouth. The mouth will give you emotions and stuff too. Did you just pin them down to look? Yeah, they're like pink, brownie, right, like beige. Or dogs usually have almost like black lips for the most part, either black or a really good brownish. It, it probably depends on the dog or the cat too, probably. But you know, just in general, because I really can't see it in my picture reference that I have. But I want to um, I want to reference it in my painting, just like I'm going to add a little more light to the tip of his this cat's nose to help represent the light source coming down. So if a light was coming down, it would hit the top of his nose, and then right underneath the nostrils, that little part of the nose that sticks out would be a little lighter as well. And then we'll just tap it with some water. So they're there. Just like I did this shade under here. I want it, I'm going to draw on top of the shade, but it'll help make what I draw on top of it a little darker. And I'll probably come back and mess with that about 10 or 12 times. But, you know. <laughs> All right, folks. Surprisingly enough, an hour has gone by really, really fast. And it's about time for me to go. So. If there's any last questions, I'm going to bring up who's coming up next so you guys can all follow. This is my cat. Follow me, you can follow me on Kathy Grillo Designs, and especially on um, Instagram and Facebook if you want to see the finished product, or if you're a member of our group, you'll see it because I will post it anywhere, so you can look us up <laughs> on any of the social media and follow us, or contact any of us and we'll help you out, and then up next... Here's our schedule for the day, guys. So up next, we have Inky Paws Art. I don't know if Inky Paws was in here. Jenny, if you were in here, throw up some emojis really quick. 
but she's probably getting ready. So, everybody just go in the search and look up Inky Paws Art, or look up hashtag LDCC, or hashtag Art Block, and you will see us all today. I thank you for spending time with me. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see everybody around soon. Have a great day, everybody. Happy Art Block! Woo-hoo!